Good day everyone. Today we are going to cover Kelsen's pure theory of law, which is one of the uh, theories under the topic of positivism. Okay? Now who is actually Hans Kelsen? He is definitely a positivist. He is an Australian European legal philosopher and a teacher. Uh, he is mostly famous for his studies on law and especially for his idea known as the pure theory of law which is the topic that we are uh, covering today okay because pure theory of law is one of the positivism uh, theories okay it is centered centered upon man made laws okay his theory other than pure law it can also be referred to as normative theory okay also known as pure law now the idea revolves around the rejection of the is and ought relationship. Kelsen does not believe what is law and what ought to be law as something that um, is uh, propounded by the naturalists. Okay? Because according to Kelsen, law is known as a structural analysis of law, meaning what is there in the books that is the law itself it is uniform and same in every legal order that we have out there okay now although that he believes that there is dynamism in the legal order which the law can be applied in uh, different circumstances okay the, it must be the same law as what is written in the books okay now whatever that we have uh, at present, okay, these new rules are actually generated from the existing rules. There cannot be a situation that the law comes up by itself. It must be motivated by uh, an existing rule somewhere, okay, that gives power to the present rule, okay. Now, um, because we come back literally, what does pure mean? Okay, pure means it is stand alone. It means it is not influenced by any other energy out there. Okay, so therefore, according to Kelsen, law should be free from the influence of other elements such as morality, ethics, history, sociology, politics, as well as religion. According to Kelsen, these other elements they are actually extra legal rules and should be separate from the law itself. Okay. Now, hence, law is pure. It is only law and regal rules and norms. They stand alone on its own. These rules and regulations are linked to each other within a hierarchical manner. These are superior norms. There are superior norms as well as inferior norms. But they are actually stand alone on its own. Okay? Now, Carlson considers the law is a grand norm, okay? which uh, from which all other sciences are emerged. Law is a central idea for the other elements out there. Okay, now what is the normative order referred to by Kelsen here? He says that norms are linked in a hierarchical order. So what is at the top of the hierarchy is the constitution. From constitution, it emanates from, to the parliament, to the criminal law, to the crimes that are defined and there are penalties that are described, prescribed for any violation of the crime, okay? And then there comes the sentencing and there comes the execution. Now, normative order means, okay, whatsoever that comes, they are actually from one uh, family or one group. When we talk about sentencing or when we talk about execution, it's not per se sentencing is not per se execution because it actually emanates from the constitution itself he says that inferior norms actually derive their power from the superior norms now grand norm is the central idea for kelsen's pure theory of law okay according to kelsen grand norm is the highest norm okay uh, it empowers to validate the lower norms. The, the idea behind grand norm is any small law, any subsidiary laws that we have out there 
that are actually emanating from the highest norm there is. Okay, it is a source from which the other norms get validity. So, in our context uh, of Malaysia, the grand norm according to Kelsen is the constitution itself. Okay, now from the constitution, the lower norms will emanate from the constitution. So, what is grand norm? It is the constitution of the country or it is the international law. But then again, it depends on the um, source of law, the primary source of law in that jurisdiction. For some of the countries, they might not be referring to the constitution as the central uh, power or the grand norm for that country. Maybe for uh, the Middle Eastern countries, they are referring to the uh, Islamic sources of law, okay, which could be their grand norm. Okay? The validity of the grand norm depends on its recognition. It is valid because we believe it exists. We, it, uh, the constitution is valid because we believe that the constitution is uh, valid and it has power, to, it has the capability of empowering any other laws out there. Okay. Now, the relationship now the relationship between state and law, okay? He believes in monoism, okay? Meaning the state and the law is an, actually one entity. Or in other words, the state is not separate from law. In a normative order, the state stands somewhere within the normative order meaning to say the constitution the parliament the state they are actually one entity the law decides the basic characteristics of a state due to this matter okay the state cannot be existence without the law and the law is actually empowering the state what are the components of the state okay, it could be territory it could be the people it could be the government so therefore according to Kelsen start state is part of a legal order and a legal order is bigger than the state itself now when we talk about natural law and justice natural law as we have already learned in the uh, previous topic okay, is something not agreed upon by Kelsen Definitely, because the source of power for natural law is the nature itself, whereby for positivism, it is the man-made law. So, Kelsen rejects the idea of is and ought. He rejects the idea of justice. According to him, justice in an extraterritorial uh, um, uh, element from the law itself. Therefore, by having justice, it is not pure law. There are so many things impacting upon justice. But there is should not be anything that impacts upon the law itself. Justice is a combination of other values. What do people think about being just? What do people want to be in just? But as you can see, the difference between uh, Kelsen's pure theory of law and positivism is there is no element of morality which impacts upon the um, uh, the law okay the pure theory of law and as well as justice how however sanction is an element which is very important in Kelsen's normative order because according to Kelsen sanction is part of the legal order itself now let's take an example where one norm defines crime and another norm defines punishment example the crime of murder the law defines murder is a crime the following section talks says the punishment for murder is blah 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 okay therefore punishment is part of legal order it's not separate uh, from it in contrast to austin a fellow positivist which we will be covering after this austin's common theory austin believes that sanction is separate from law okay sanction is not part of the law it is exercised by the king and his officials but according to kelsen Punishment or sanction is part of the legal order. Now let's take a look very quickly at the differences between Austin's and Kelsen's uh, positivism theory. Okay, now Kelsen is pure theory of law, and Austin is the command theory. According to Kelsen, law is a normative order. It takes a softer approach as to understanding that law, because the law is 
generating solely from the existing norms. There cannot be a law which suddenly appears. It must come from an existing law. Okay. Now, but according to Austin, law is the command of the sovereign. Okay, because command theory is like someone giving command to an inferior. Okay, so all the power of law making is with the king. Okay, now therefore, Austin says sanction is separate from the law, but Kelsen says sanction is part of the law. Why? Okay, because according to Austin, state and law is separate. So therefore, state dictates the law, dictates the punishment. So, but According to Kelsen, because uh, section itself is part of the law, state is part of the normative order. Now, of course, uh, when we talk about all theories out there, there will be uh, criticisms, okay, as in indicated by literature. Uh, other theory, other juries are some of them are against pure law theory due to the following reasons. Number one, grand norm is vague and confusing. We don't actually know the definitive. Uh, a concept for grand norm. Okay, number two, purity in, in law cannot be maintained. How can we say a law is stand alone when in fact it cannot live in a vacuum? Why do we need law in the first pay, place? Is to get, regulate the people, but if the element of the people cannot interfere with the uh, law making process, the the impacts of the law, the sanctions of the law, then it's quite impossible. Now, the third one is Kelsen ignored totally natural law okay but in the real world natural law cannot be ignored altogether for the primary reason that human nature is somehow to a certain extent impacting upon the creation of the law itself okay and fourth a single theory cannot dominate all the legal systems in the world of course, this is also applicable to other uh, types of uh, theories of as well that we are covering in this top in this course. Okay, a single theory cannot dominate all the legal systems in the world by reason that there are strengths and weaknesses of the theory. So we will combine the understanding of certain theories together for the benefit of the people. Okay, and most importantly, law is connected with many other aspects out there. It cannot exist in a vacuum by itself. Now, this is uh, one of our uh, assessment. Uh, we have the uh, URL for an article by Torben Spark which talks about the differences between Hart's positivism against Kelsen's positivism. Okay, uh, I need you to work on the similarities and differences and how is it impacting the development of the law in the current world i need you to give example of a certain statute certain case certain um, uh, legal source in malaysia which talks about each ideology okay All right the instructions have been uploaded to you am online learning thank you so much for your kind attention assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh